We're set to go in Sheboygan after a nearly 45 minute delay. We had some issues with the umpires, with this being a makeup game. Some miscommunication, and we had no umpires, but now we do, and we're going to resume very shortly. It's the Oshkosh Giants taking on your Sheboygan A's. The A's are going to be the road team. This is the final of the Wisconsin State League Challenge. This game was supposed to be played on Friday, but some rain forced us to push it back till today. And as it is still part of the challenge, it'll be just seven innings. And on the mound for the Oshkosh Giants, it'll be Josh Ditter. And a lineup that he'll face for It'll be Chris Saltzman to lead it off, and Mark Warner batting second, Harry Stelt batting in the three hole. Mitch Sutton will be cleaning up tonight, Adam Ryan batting fifth, Zach Kane, the DH, will bat sixth. Hunter Berry is batting seventh, Weston Nelson batting eighth, and Grant Kusenke batting in the ninth spot. Defensively, for the Oshkosh Giants in the outfield, it's okay. Kyle Schultz in left, Luke Gajewski in center. There we go. And Mitch there Peterson we... in right. Saltzman. And Saltzman will step in. Leading off for the A's, center fielder, number 26, Chris Saltzman. On the infield for the Giants at first, it's Mike Gross. Second baseman is Blake Dillavu. At short is Hunter Messerschmidt, and the third baseman is Logan Vasquez. As the first pitch is a strike, it's 0-1 to Saltzman. Behind the backstop, it's Tyler Arthur doing the catching. And again, Josh Ditter on the mound. It's an 0-1 count to Chris Saltzman near the top of the first inning. First, or 0-1 misses inside. It's a ball and a strike. Now the 1-1 one, one is a shot on the first base line, but foul, 1-2. and two. It's Josh Dinner, the lefty, against the leadoff batter. And lefty hitting Chris Salzman as there's a shot off the first baseman. It's off his glove. And it's going to be safe at first, as Salzman will reach on an E3 off the glove of the first baseman, Mike Gross. He tried to recover and flip it to Ditter covering, but it wasn't in time. Salzman had good speed, and the A's will have a leadoff base runner. The left fielder, number 16, Mark Warner. And now it's Mark Warner. The A's looking to take advantage of the error here on the top of the first. Water takes the first pitch high for a ball, 1-0. Ditter, a long look in, as now he's set, and the 1-0 is hit into right center. It's going to hang up just enough as the right fielder Mitch Peterson will make the catch in right center. As he sort of stumbles as he makes the catch, it's the first out of the inning. Third baseman, number 19, Harry Stelt. Water hit it into the gap, but he got under it just a bit. As it hung up just enough for Peterson to make the catch. So now it's Harry Stelt, runner still at first as Salzman takes off. And it's a foul into the net, 0-1, as Saltzman will go back to first. The 0-1 from Ditter, off the outside, also low, 1-1. 
Now a 1-1 one, one count. We are just underway. Still no score. It's a runner at first. That's Salzman. He reached on an error to begin the ball game. It's an error by the first baseman, Mike Gross. Now Salzman takes off again as Stelt pops that one up. Gross is going to sit underneath it in foul territory, and now he's going to flip it to dinner, and that's a double play. With Saltzman off on the pitch, who was able to be doubled off, tried sprinting back, but it goes as a foul pop-up, so and then a 3-1 to one put out for, for the double play, and the inning is over. So the A's going to lead off base runner on the air. Also be sure to visit our souvenir stand and concession stand for all but your they cannot bring them across the score. We'll head to the bottom half of the first. The A's scoreless. The Oshkosh Giants are coming up next. Center fielder, number 23, Luke Gajewski. Luke Gajewski will lead it off here in the bottom of the first, and it's Mitch Gardner on the mound for the A's. This is his first start of the season. He gets a swing and a miss from Gajewski, 0-1. So this is his 32nd career start as he gets a called strike at the knees and on the outside, 0-2. Oh now fastball down low and away, blocked by Nelson. 1-2, and two. it's Kyle Schultz to follow, then Mike Gross batting third. As the 1-2 misses off the outside, 2-2. Two and two. Hunter Messerschmidt will be cleaning up, Mitch Peterson batting fifth, Tyler Arthur Batting six, it's Logan Vasquez in the seventh spot, Blake Dillavu batting eighth, and Josh Dinner the pitcher batting ninth. So no DH for Oshkosh as that one's fouled up the first base side. Still two and two. Now that one's popped up to the right side. Sutton will give it a look, but it'll be out of play. Defensively for the A's, in the outfield, it's Water and left, Saltzman in center, Adam Ryan in right. Harry Stelt is playing third, Grant Kosenke at short, Hunter Berry at second, Mitch Sutton at first with Weston Nelson doing the catching. As that one is grounded right back to Gardner, he'll flip it to Sutton. That's a 1-3 put out for the first out. Left fielder, number 12, Kyle Schultz. So now it's Kyle Schultz. One out, nobody on base here in the bottom of the first. There's no score. He's got one base runner in the top of the first on an error, which was erased on a double play. And there's a called strike on the outside, 0-1. Pitch in the dirt from Gardner. And he'll skip up and past the glove of Nelson, 1-1. One Gardner putting his ERA of zero to the test in his first start. 
Is that one misses down low? Two balls and a strike. He's gone seven and a third innings in his five appearances. Again, all of them relief appearances. He gave up five hits. He did allow two runs, but they were both unearned. So now it's a 2 2 count. He struck out nine in those seven and a thirds. He walked three. No record with one save. So that one's fouled. Bueller. Bueller. Still two and two. Bueller. Bueller. Now there's a swing and a miss, a strikeout. First of the evening. And it's two up, two down. Put it on the outside and had Schultz swinging on it way late, trying to protect. First baseman number 22, Mike Gross. So now it's Mike Gross playing first base. Bats from the right side. And that one misses off the outside, a ball and no strikes. Gardner, a right-handed pitcher, works from the first base side of the rubber. As he gets a swing and a miss, and he pitched down and away. One and one. Now a pitch low and away, but a check swing. Home plate umpire says he went. So Gross down one and two. Gardner is a pitcher that will often change his arm angle. Usually goes over the top, but will often go off the side, and there he gets a strikeout. That was an over a top arm angle fastball, swung and a missed, and that's the second strikeout and the final out of the inning. So Gardner, in his first start of the season, looking at sharp, he will three up, three down with two strikeouts and under the top of the second inning. It's scoreless between the Chicago A's and the Oshkosh Giants. One lucky fan will be taken. Here we go. Top of the second, it's Mitch Sutton to lead it off. Leading off for the A's, the first baseman, number 45, Mitch Sutton. A's got a leadoff base runner in the top of the first. It was an error committed by the first baseman, Mike Gross. That allowed Saltzman to reach. He was put out on a double play and a pop-up as he was off from the pitch as Sutton takes a called strike from the lefty Josh Ditter, 0-1. It'll be Adam Ryan and Zach Kane to follow. These are in the middle of the order, 4, 5, and 6, as that one misses down and away. To the right-handed Mitch Sutton, 1-1. One one. So now that one misses way outside. Just a little outside. As it soars past the... Uh, Catcher Arthur's gloves and goes to the backstop. Two and one. Two and one from Ditter. As Sutton gets jammed, but he's able to dump it down the right field line. That's a base hit. Sutton got it in on his hands and he popped it up, but he was able to. Put it down the right field line in front of Mitch Peterson. Right fielder, number 39, Adam Ryan. Just fair. And the A's have a leadoff base runner on the base hit from Sutton for Adam Ryan. First hit for either ball club. We're in the top of the second. 
a game that's still scoreless as the lefty Adam Ryan takes one off the outside for a ball, 1-0. Oh. The left-handed pitcher, Ditter, against the left-handed batter, Ryan. As there's a little chopper over to the right side. And everybody's going to be safe as now Sutton will go all the way to third. It was a ground ball to Blake Dillavu, the second baseman. CJ. The first baseman, D4. Mike Gross, was trying for the ball as well. And because of that, there was nobody at first base. So Ditter tried to go and cover the first base bag. But Dillavu threw the ball away. It went off the, hitter, number 21, Zach Kane. Off the facing of the Giants' dugout. So that allows Sutton to go to third. Adam Ryan at first. It's an E4, no base hit. Now that one's grounded past Gross, actually off his glove. And now everybody's going to be safe. And Sutton's going to score. And the A's have a 1 0 lead. He was ranging off. Okay. That'll be ruled a single. An RBI that allows Sutton to score. Second baseman, number 15, Hunter Berry. Adam Ryan goes to second. Was just off the end of the glove of Mike Gross. Blake Dillavu, the second baseman, picked it up. But because Gross was trying to make a play, there was nobody on first base. And Ditter, the pitcher, was not able to get over there in time as it's a called strike to Hunter Berry 0 and 1. Breaking ball missed the outside. Right handed Hunter Berry playing second base tonight. It's 1 and 1. So, lucky break for the A's. Sammy, the inserts are ready. It's an error in the inning and a base hit just snuck in by Zach Kane. Gives them their first run. They leave one to nothing as that one's hitting the right. That'll hang up for Mitch Peterson as he'll make the catch on the foul line in short right field. That's the second out. Catcher, the first out of the inning. Number 30, Weston Nelson. So now it's Weston Nelson who's doing the catching. It's Ryan at second. He reached on the E4, and Kane, who just had the RBI infield single, and scored Sutton from third base. First pitch misses off the outside, 1-0. A's do not have a hard hit ball in the inning. Sutton blooped one down the right field line on a pitch that got in on his hands. Ryan reached on a Arrow that was just a chopper over to Dillavu at second. As that one's fouled back, one and one. Zach Kane then hit a little infield single that was just off the end of the first baseman Gross's glove. And it was Hunter Berry who just flew out to right. Still just one on the inning. A's have two base runners still. As Nelson, and that's a hard hit ball, and that's going to go on the left. That's a base hit. And the A's are going to go station to station. As Lumens is going to hold up Adam Ryan at third. But now the A's have loaded up the bases. Their first hard hit ball of the inning is a clean single in the left for Weston Nelson. Shortstop, number 14, Grant Kosinki. So Ryan at third, Zach Kane at second. And Nelson, who just had the base hit at first. It's Grant Kosenke, the shortstop now. A's in the bottom of the order, the ninth spot. Buying a double play. Saltzman and the top of the order are due up next. So there's a call strike, 0-1 on the outside. And the 0-1 is grounded over to third base. Logan Vasquez, is, he's going to throw it home, and it's going to be off the bit of the catcher, Arthur. Another one's going to score. It'll be a fielder's choice. 2-0 A's lead. 
And the bases are still loaded for Saltzman. Center fielder, number 26, Chris Saltzman. With the bases loaded, Adam Ryan had to come home. It was a swinging bunt that Vasquez played about halfway up the third base side. It would have been a tough play to get Adam Ryan, but it was... The throw was off the end of the glove of Arthur, the catcher who dropped it. And so that one's fouled to the left side, 0-1. It's not an error, it's really a fielder's choice, as everybody's still safe. It's Kane at third. Nelson at second. Kosenke at first for Salzman as the 0-1 is down and in. Just missing the inside. Ball and a strike to Saltzman, who reached on an error in the first that let off the ball game. Now he takes one low and away. Two balls and a strike. Nelson will be given an RBI. Or excuse me, Kaseki will be given an RBI on the fielder's choice. And all going to reach first. As now Saltzman turns on one, he hits it well, but he hits it foul. Just out ahead of it, if he keeps it fair, that's a grand slam. Instead, it's a 2 2 count. He's trying to break this game open early. They have two runs in the inning. Bases loaded, one out, and El Salzman hits one to the right side. That's a base hit. And it's just going to be Kane to score from third. Everyone else is going to go up 90 feet. Base is still loaded. A's have three in. Three to nothing. And it's Mark Water coming up. Left fielder, number 16, Mark Water. It's a ground ball that went through the right side and the right. Lumens, comfortable going station to station as the A's try to blow this game open and that first pitch has popped up. In the center, Luke Gajewski sprinting in will make the catch in short center. Not deep enough to score the run from third, so no sack fly. Second out of the inning for Harry Stelt. Third baseman, number 19, Harry Stelt. Base is still loaded. And Stelt is the ninth man to bat in the inning. The A's have batted around. Mitch Sutton, who's on deck, singled and eventually scored in this inning. And Stelt hits that one to left center. That's going to get down. That's going to go all the way to the wall. And that's going to clear the bases. As the left fielder, Kyle Schultz, has issues as coming around third and scoring from first is Saltzman, and the A's have scored six. They lead six to nothing. It's a bases clearing double from Harry Stelt. And the A's have put up a six spot here at the top of the second. as it'll bring up the 10th man to bat in the inning. It's Mitch Sutton who started this with a single. First baseman, number 45, Mitch Sutton. Three RBIs for Harry Stelt. And Sutton takes one down and on the inside corner for a strike, 0-1. Kane, Nelson, and Kosenke were the ones, or excuse me, Nelson, Kosenke, and Saltzman were the ones to score. There's a swing and a foul, 0-2. Nelson, who was at third, and Kosenke, who was at second, were able to score easily. Saltzman came all the way from, around from first to score. So now Sutton hits one to the right side. Dillavu will pick it up and throw in time, and the inning will end. But the A's bring 10 men to the plate. One, two, three, and the big hit was the bases clearing double from Stelt. That gave them their fourth, fifth, and sixth runs here. of the inning, and we'll head to the bottom half of the second. The A's have now a sizable lead.
first. Oshkosh has a pair of It's Air six nothing over Oshkosh. Of courtesy of their Butterfingers, I have a color certificate for program number two. Hunter Messerschmidt will lead it off against Mitch Gardner, who now finds himself with a 6-0 lead. To the A's bat around, they actually bring 10 men to the plate. The first pitch misses inside, a ball and no strikes. To Messerschmidt. He's playing shortstop. It'll be Peterson and Tyler Arthur to follow. And the first pitch, is, or the 1-0, is hit up the middle in the center. That's a base hit. First hit. Deal. And with Messer right fielder, in the first. Number 25, Mitch Peterson. It's Mitch Peterson. First hit for the Giants is there's a swing and a miss on a pitch low and away. Well, the 0 1 inside corner for a call strike and a curve 0 and 2 to the right fielder Peterson. This is his first plate appearance. He's batting in the five spot as he'll swing and miss. There's a strikeout, the third for Mitch Gardner. First out of the inning. The catcher, number eight, Tyler Arthur. Now it's the catcher, Tyler Arthur, with Messer Schmidt still at first base. He had the single to lead off the inning as that one is off the outside to the left-handed batting Arthur. A ball and no strikes. Now Arthur follows that one back. One and one. Now the one one is a curve off the knee of Mitch Gardner. But you'll be able to be he'll recover and get the out at first. If he plays that cleanly and picks it up with his glove, he might have a double play. Third baseman, number 15, Logan Vasquez. Instead, it looked like he was off his knee and caromed a few feet to the right of the pitcher's mound. So Messer Schmidt goes to second. Force out at, is at first. So it goes one to three. It's a now 0-1 count to the third baseman Bosquez. And is that 0-1 misses off the outside, a ball and a strike. Now a swing and a liner foul. Near the A's dugout one and two.
One, two from Gardner. Hit right back up the box and it'll go underneath the glove of Gardner. As Kasanke will pick that one up in just behind the second base bag, it'll be an infield single. No play can be made. Second baseman number 17, Blake Dillavu. At the very least, by keeping that ball from going in the outfield, it keeps Messerschmidt from scoring from second base. So it's runners in the corners for Blake Dillavu. He takes a called strike on one. So the second base hit of the inning is the 0-1 misses down and away, blocked by Nelson. Good job, keeps the runners from advancing, keeps that runner at third. A's lead six to nothing. We got all six of the runs at the top of the inning. The big hit being the bases clearing double from Harry Stelt with two outs. So there's a little cue shot off the end of the bat, right to Sutton, who'll pick it up and step on first. That will end the inning. Gardner gives up his first two hits, but he's able to strand the men on the corners, and we'll head to the top of the third. A is still leading over the Giants six to nothing. Wiser products for every run. Your A's. Adam Ryan will lead it off. As the A's lead six to nothing. As Josh Ditter is on the mound for his third inning on the first pitch. Ryan lines that one in the left center and that's gonna be off the fence near the legend Larry's sign and that's gonna be a stand up easy double for Adam Ryan to lead off the inning. Adam Ryan didn't wait. He got a pitch he could handle, and he hammered that one up in the left center. Designated hitter, number 21, Zach Kane. So now it's Zach Kane, and he'll step in with a runner in scoring position. It's the sixth hit for the A's. The first five came in the last inning. So there's a call strike on the outside to the left-handed hitting DH. Kane singled in the first run. It was in the last inning. That scored Mitch Sutton. A's would score five more in that inning. They now lead six to nothing as that one misses inside. One and one. It'll be Hunter Berry to follow and then Weston Nelson to follow. So that one misses off the outside. Two balls and a strike to Zach Keane. And 
And it's now quickly 3-1 and one as Kane is ahead in the count. Back-to-back -back pitches that were well off the plate and easy takes for Kane. Three one from Ditter on the outside called strike three and two. Full count, nobody out. It's Ryan at second who led off the inning with a double on the first pitch of the inning. And that'll be ball four. Kane will take his trot over to first. Men at first and second now for Hunter Berry. Second baseman, number 15, Hunter Berry. So Hunter Berry, who flew out to right. That was the first out in the second. He's 0 for 1. As he takes a ball, 1 and 0. He was one of just two batters in outreach in the inning. Warner was the other who flew out to center. As that pitch misses high. Two balls and no strikes. Every other batter in the inning reached either on a single, a double, or an error. That walk to Kane was the first walk given up by Ditter. There's a swing and a foul. Right at home plate. Two balls and a strike. Ditter set and the 2 1. Swinging a foul. That went straight back to the backstop. Two balls and two strikes now to Barry. Coming into tonight, the A's are 18 and 10 overall, 11 and 7 in the Wisconsin State League. won the first game in this challenge that was 3-0 on Saturday over the Addison Braves. So the runners are off on the pitch. It's a curve that hangs out and off the outside for a ball. It's 3-2 and two and everybody's going to be safe. So Ryan steals third. Kane steals second. The A's Decided to steal on a good pitch. It was a slow breaking ball off the outside. Give him another couple seconds before the catcher could get that ball. As that one's fouled. Three and two still. They fell to Lombard on Saturday following the win over Addison, Addison nine to one. And then they fell yesterday to Kenosha five to one. So after scoring just two runs in their last two games, offense has found their groove here in this game. And they had six in the second and they were threatening for more as that one's popped up and dropped by the shortstop in short right left center looks like it might have been a possible field or sack fly instead a dropped pop-up everybody's going to be safe it's an e6 and the bases are loaded for weston nelson catcher number 30 weston nelson the third error already committed by Oshkosh. We're in the top of the third. As that one misses down and away, a ball and no strikes. He's trying to get back into the win, win column. Again, they've lost their last two. Now that one's fouled to the right side. That's going to be in play and caught by Mike Gross in foul territory up the first baseline. Shortstop number 14, Grant Kosenke. Play was made behind first base in foul territory. So now it's Grant Kosenke. He takes a first pitch strike, 0 1. Kosenke hit a swinging bunt to the third baseman, Vasquez, who tried to get an out at the plate with the bases loaded. But the throw was off the glove 
of the catcher Arthurs. It's now 0 2 on a called strike that allowed everyone to be safe. Actually goes down as a fielder's choice for Kasenki. Was given an RBI. Now stands with the bases loaded again and one out. So that one is down low for a ball. Gets away from Arthur just a bit, but not nearly enough for anyone to try and score or advance on the play. So it's one and two. It was Ryan who led it off with the double on the first pitch of the inning. Kane walked. Barry reached on an E6. It was a pop-up in the left center that the shortstop Messerschmitt dropped. So that one's off the outside. Good job by Arthur to corral that one. It's a 2-2 count. A's at the top of the order to follow. It's Chris Salzman on deck. Now that one's hit down the right side. That'll be out of play foul on the New Jersey Avenue. Still 2-2. Two and two. Now the 2-2 again. Okay. That one's hit into short left center. And it's going to hang up for Gajewski to make a catch. And we're going to have a play at the plate. And the throw is up the line. So Ryan scores on a sack fly. Zach King goes up the third on the throw. A's get another. And they now lead 7 to nothing. Center fielder, number 26, Chris Saltzman. So now it's Chris Saltzman, runners on the corners. Again, Kane advanced on the throw. Barry stayed put. There's a called strike to Saltzman, 0-1. Looked like we could have had a chance at a plate to plate. Gajewski was able to get underneath it. Wasn't that deep in the left center is now Saltzman. It's a loop foul on the left field side. Now 0-2. But the throw was well up the line, about halfway up the third base bag. So Ryan scored standing. It's an RBI for Kasenki. His second of the evening, despite not having a base hit. Saltzman is one for two with a single, and he reached on an error. Now that's a little line drive off the end of the bat that will die right on the infield, and it will be picked up by the pitcher Ditter, and he'll throw over to first, and the inning will end. So the A's leave two runners out, but they do get one more in the sack fly. As they the increase their already sizable lead. Eight. We'll head to the bottom half of the I, I third. A is lead. It's seven nothing over the Oshkosh Giants. Dinner. Josh Dinner will lead it off. Oh, it'd be good to play with the red field, especially with the left field. As a small delay, as Adam Ryan is slightly late in getting to his spot in the right field. You gotta take a leap. Probably in a Sorry, I should. 
So he's now in right. We're set to begin. And the first pitch, Ditter hits it over to Sutton, who will flip it to Gardner, who comes sprinting off the mound to cover the first base bag. And the first out is recorded. Three to one goes the put out. Center fielder, number 23, Luke Gajewski. So now it's Luke Gajewski, the top of the order. It was Ditter's first at bat. And the Giants do not have a DH as Ditter will bat for himself as he just grounded out. So it's Gajewski, he takes a called strike and he grounded out to Gardner to begin the day offensively for the Giants that was in the bottom of the first and now it's 0-2 after a called strike. Gardner a couple of shakes and now gets what he wants from the catcher Nelson and misses off the outside. One and two. That one misses high, but letter high. Two and two. Now there's a little line drive that'll be in the right center. That's going to split the gap. Good job by Saltzman in center to get to it quickly in right center. Does keep that runner at first base. He hurt himself? Yeah, he kind of stumbled around the uh, running down. Okay. Now we have a small injury delay. Gajewski is limping. Yeah, I think he just pulled himself out of the game. Pulled his right hand. Finch running for Gajewski, number three, Jake Kobe. So Jake Kobe will now come in for Gajewski. Gajewski, who is the manager, went to the umpire because he made the decision to pull himself out of the game as he hurt himself as he got near the first base bag. So Jake Kobian now as a pinch runner. Gajewski's out of the game after he hurt himself. What's the number of the runner? Three. What's his last name? First pitch Kobe. is a ball down right. low, one and oh. So Gajewski, the center fielder, manager, and leadoff batter is out of the game. Look, it was an issue with possibly his hamstring or something with his leg. He was definitely visibly limping. Now there's a curve on the inside for a called strike, two and one. Mitch Gardner is much like Taylor Swartz in that he works very quickly. As that pitch misses off the outside, three and one. Takes them only about six or seven sec seconds between pitches. As now that three one is sky down the right field side. It's in foul territory and it's a foul ball. Looks like Sutton might have made a basket catch, but it was just out of his reach. As Adam Ryan and Barry Second baseman were also charging in. It's just a foul ball, so it's strike two. It's a full count now, three and two. And the payoff. And Schultz was late on it. Another 3 2 pitch coming. Schultz is 0 for 1. He struck out in the first. That was the first of three strikeouts that Gardner has so far. Now there's a pitch down low for ball four. That'll be the first walk allowed. Another base runner for the Giants. It'll be Kobe to go to second. First baseman, number 22, Mike Gross. So now it's Mike Gross, the first baseman. Runners at first and second. 
Still just one out. A's do lead 7 to nothing. That pitch misses down and away. Blocked by Nelson. Keeps those runners from advancing 1-0. and A's have seven runs, six base hits, no errors. The Giants have been held scoreless on three base hits, and they've committed three errors on defense. We're in the bottom of the third, as it's now two balls and no strikes. And now that one misses low. It had the plate, but it's below the knees. Three balls, no strikes. As Gardner in danger of walking the bases loaded, it's 3-0. With the cleanup hitter Hunter Messerschmidt on deck. Called strike three and one. Gross was taken all the way. Gross struck out in the first. He's 0 for 1. And now he'll take one down low for ball four, and the bases will indeed be loaded. It's Jake Covey at third. He pinch ran for Gajewski, who pulled himself from the game after he hurt himself on the base hit. Shortstop, as number was, 18, Hunter Messerschmidt. As he was rounding first, bay, first base. Schultz followed with a walk. He stands at second, and now Gross, who just walked at first base. So it's Messerschmidt. And he takes a called strike on the outside. 0-1, giant shortstop, single to lead off the second. As he quickly falls behind Gardner, 0-2. He's looking for the double play to get him out of the inning. Infield playing back, leading 7-0, and there's a swing and a miss. Messer Schmidt strikes out on a pitch high. Couldn't hold up. It's the fourth K for Gardner. Right fielder, number 25, Mitch Peterson. And it's Mitch Peterson. First pitch down and away, blocked by Nelson, 1-0. Peterson is 0-1 with a K. That came in the second. A half swing, he clearly went, and the home plate umpire calls it a strike on a swing, one and one. As that one will miss, as the count moves to a 2-1 count in favor of the batter Peterson. Another half swing on a pitch down and away, but this time Peterson holds up. Three and one. And with the bases loaded, Gardner forced to come to the zone. He wants to avoid walking a run in. And he'll get a call strike on the outside, right at the knees. It's a full count. Two outs in the inning. A's have a seven nothing lead. Runners will be off on the pitch as there they go. And it's down low. Looks like it just missed the bottom of the zone. A run will score. An RBI for Mitch Peterson. Catcher, number eight, Tyler Arthur. As Jake Kobe comes in to score, Schultz goes to third, Mike Gross goes to second, Pitt Peterson goes to first base. Now it's Tyler Arthur. As Gardner has struggled with his command, he's walked three batters in the inning. A swing and a miss, 0-1-1. As that one is hit in the center, but Saltzman just have to take a couple steps to his left and also just a couple steps back, and he'll make the catch, and the inning will end. The A's do give up one as Gardner struggled with his command and walked in a run. But as we head to the top of the fourth inning, the A's still 
have a sizable lead. It's at seven to one as we enter the top of the fourth. I'm not usually. I've never really. We have a pinch hitter here in the top of the fourth. It's Rodney Valdez, the pitcher, in place of Mark Warner. Warner was playing left. I'll let you know if that's where Valdez ends up going defensively, or if someone will just take Warner, someone else will take Warner's spot in left. The first pitch, as Josh Jitter is still in the mound, it's a ball, 1-0. and Valdez in limited chances at the plate, has had some success. He's got three hits and four tries. As that one misses down the way, two balls and no strikes. He's got five total plate appearances. Of those three hits, one is a double. He's got two RBIs and a sack fly. He's also got a stolen base on the season. That one is a strike, two and one. Valdez, who usually is DH for, getting a rare chance to swing the bat in a game the A's lead seven to one here in the top of the fourth inning. A reminder, this game will only go seven. As now that one is lined yeah. to left, and that's going to be another base hit. So Valdez continuing his hot ways at the plate. As he will boost up his batting average to 800. He's four for five. Third baseman, number 19, Perry Stelt. Who's 44? Uh, Peterson. So now it's Harry Stelt after Valdez singles. And now Stelt hits one, a rocket pass. Vasquez at third base. Looks like he might have had a shot to snag it as he tried to play it off his backhand in the air. Kyle Peterson. Okay. As that one will go all down the left field line. Runners at first and second. 
And as Schultz was able to cut it off before it went into the corner. Number 44, Kyle Peterson. And we have another pinch hitter now for Mitch Sutton. It's Kyle Peterson. First pitch is a strike. It's 0 1. So back to back singles. And also, because this game is only seven innings, the 10 run rule shouldn't matter. And it might in a game that is currently 7 to 1, as that one's fall back. The 10 run rule is applied after only five, rather than the usual seven. So if the A's can increase their lead to 10 by the end of the bottom of the fifth, There will be no need for a 6th and 7th inning as that one's followed back. Still 0-2. In the current situation, they would need four more as they lead 7-1. They got 6th in the top of the second, 1 in the top of the third. Giants were able to get 1 in the bottom half of the third. As that one is off the glove, that one will go all the way to the backstop. And both runners will be easily allowed to advance. It's Valdez at third. It's Harry Stelt at second. They both had singles to lead off the inning. Still nobody out in the inning. It's Kyle Peterson who's pinch hitting for Mitch Sutton. With Zach Kane, the DH, due up on deck. Excuse me, Adam Ryan, the right fielder, do up on deck. As that one's popped up, and Dinder will make the catch right behind the mound. That's the first out. So now it's Adam Ryan. Right fielder, number 39, Adam Ryan. Adam Ryan doubled. To lead off the third inning, he eventually scored the seventh run of the ball game for the A's. Is that one misses? CJ, Jack? Huh? Jack or Jake? Jake. And we'll have another pinch hitter for Zach Kane. It'll be Jake Arns, who's standing on deck. There's a half swing foul on the third base line. As it will roll past the A's dugout. A ball and a strike. Ryan has two runs scored and also a stolen base. He reached on an error in the second. He scored the second of the six runs in the inning. So there's a curveball that floats up in the air and almost comes in and hits him. As Ryan able to just back out of the way in time, two balls and a strike. Two one as. Ryan was looking to send that one to Lake Michigan. Instead, it's a 2-2 count. Still just one out in the inning. He is threatening for more in the inning, second and third. Which, and it's now a pitch off the outside as it will go full, three and two. It's hit to the right side, picked up by Delavu and throw over to first is in time. It will bring in another run as Rondi Valdez scores from third easily. RBI ground out, four to three. Stealth goes to third. A's now lead eight to one. Does a good hit hitter, number 29, Jake Arns. So now it's Jake Arns. It was pinch hitting for the DH, Zach Kane. So more than likely, Arns is just going to be the new DH for the rest of this ball game. As it's a called strike on the inside to Arns, 0-1. Zach Kane finished the day 1-for-1 one one with a single, a run scored, a walk, and a stolen base. As that one is off the glove of the catcher, Arthur, and Stelt's going to be able to trot in and score. And it's now 9-1. to one. So the 
A's increase their lead to eight. With two in in the inning. Base is now empty, a 1-1 count, two outs. As that pitch is down low for a ball, two balls and a strike. That one misses off the outside. It's now three and one to Arns. With the second baseman Barry due up next. Now that one, three one, is popped up down the right field foul line, and it'll be out of play just under the reach of Mitch Peterson. Peterson was the center. And it's actually Jake Covey in right. Mitch Peterson goes to center for Luke Gajewski, who hurt himself on a single as he was running down the first base bag, or first base baseline as he got near the bag. So it's Peterson in center. Kobe, who came in for Gajewski as a pinch runner in right. And now there will be a swing and a miss as Arns is out. And as Ditter might not have known, that was the third out of the inning. But it was, and we'll head to the bottom half of the fourth. A's get two more. They now lead over the Giants. It's 9-1. Third baseman, number 15, Logan Vasquez. 9-1 is our score, A's lead. Mitch Gardner still in the mound. He's given up just one run that was on the bottom of the fourth, or bottom of the third, as we enter the bottom of the fourth. And it's a called strike, and it's 0-1 to Logan Vasquez. The 0-1 misses down and in. Ball and a strike. Defensive changes, Kyle Peterson, who pinch hit for Mitch Sutton. We'll take his spot at first. There's a swing and a miss. Foul tip, one and two. Valdez, who pinch hit for Warner, will take his spot in left. And Cole McClavick will take Saltzman's spot in center. Saltzman did not, Saltzman's spot in the order did not come up to the plate, so McClavick did not have a pinch hit appearance. But he will spot, he will now hit in these spots. Of Saltzman should it come up as that one comes in and hits Vasquez. It's a hit by pitch to lead off the inning. Second baseman, number 17, Blake Dillavu. Blake Dillavu now, runner at first, nobody out. First pitch inside. Ball and no strikes. Swing and a miss, one and one. On deck, it's the pitcher, Josh Ditter. That one misses inside. Two balls and a strike. 
Gardner, although he's given up one run, has struggled with his command. He walked three in the last inning. He's hit a batter here in this inning as he gets a swing and a miss on a pitch up and in. Two and two. He does have four strikeouts. Now there's a swing and a ground ball to Kasinki a short. Glove flip to Barry covering second for a nice play and a throw to first is down in time. A phenomenal play by Kasinki just to get the out at second. He just flipped it with his glove as he was, his momentum was taking him towards first number base. Number six, Josh Ditter. So a behind the back flip with his glove as Barry was able to snag the ball in the air and almost a phenomenal double play. But a great play just to get one. It's now 0-1 to Josh Ditter. Goes 6-4 on the putout. Dillavu reaches on a fielder's choice. Now there's a swing and a ground ball right to Gardner. He'll throw it to Kasinki covering second. The throw to first is in time and double play. One, six, three, double play. Gardner's out of the inning and we'll head to the top of the fifth. A's looking to possibly 10 run rule the Giants. They need two here in the top of the fifth. And they'll have to hold the Giants off the board in the bottom half of the fifth as they lead nine to one. We are headed into the, the Miesfeld as we head to the top of the fifth. brought to you by Miesfeld. Hunter Berry will lead it off. First pitch as Josh Ditter still on the mound for inning number five is off the outside. A ball and no strikes. A's lead nine to one over the Oshkosh Giants. Officially the Wisconsin State League Challenge ended last night when the A's fell to the Kenosha Kings five to one. But this is a makeup date from Friday. as that pitch misses inside. Two balls and a strike. Almost hits Barry. Somehow able to get out of the way of that one. Barry reached on an error in the third. It was a pop-up to the shortstop in short left center that was dropped. And he popped out in the right field for the in his first at bat. And now he's quickly ahead. Three balls and a strike with the catcher Weston Nelson on deck. And that one almost hits Nelson. That'll be ball four. As he'll sprint down to first base. As that ball gets away from Arthur, the catcher. Lead off base runner. The catcher, number 30, Weston Nelson. It'll bring up the catcher, Weston Nelson. He singled and popped out. That 
single, scored it, or he singled and later scored a run. That was in the second. As he swings and misses 0 1. Ace need two. And that would give them a 10 run lead. And they would have to keep Oshkosh off the board in the bottom half of the inning to enforce the 10 run rule. Again, because this game is only seven innings, the 10 run rule only applies after five rather than the usual seven innings. It's one and one after a pitch misses off the outside, as now Nelson will swing and miss on a pitch down and in, one and two. A's on a small losing streak of two games. They lost to Lombard in a doubleheader. They beat Addison in the first game where they fell to Lombard and they lost to Kenosha last night. So that one's fouled away, one and two, to the right side. He's back in action again tomorrow. As their next few games will be Northeastern Wisconsin Baseball League games. It'll be three straight Newville games before they have the Wisconsin Amateur Baseball Classic because that one will go into left field. Underneath the glove of the shortstop, Messer Schmidt. Would have been a tough play, even if he gets his glove on it. Nelson might Short be safe anyway. Number 14, Grant Kosenke. So it's going to be a, a base hit. Runners at first and second now for Grant Kosenke. The second base hit for Nelson. He's one for two, or two for three. Kosenke down on the count 0-1. Kosenke has two RBIs even though he doesn't have a base hit. Grounded into a fielder's choice that scored a run and he's got a sack fly. Officially he's 0 for 1. The sack fly does not hurt or does not count in an at bat. It does count as a plate appearance. A 1-1 to Kosenke, off the outside. Two balls and a strike. Tomorrow the A's have Menasha, or they get Appleton in Appleton, and then they have the Green Bay Storm here at home. And then they have the Wisconsin Amateur Baseball Classic starting Friday. With the first game being for 7.30, a doubleheader Saturday, and if they can advance, it's champ the championship weekend or championship and semifinals are on Sunday in West Bend as that one's fouled. It's two balls, two strikes. Now Kusenki pops that one up to the right side on the infield and Gross will make the catch on the infield grass just on the edge. That's the first out. So now it's Cole McClavick who came in defensively in the last inning for Chris Saltzman. Center fielder, number 24, Cole McClavick. So McClavick takes over for Saltzman in center and takes his spot at the top of the order. Saltzman finished his day one for three. As McClavick on the first pitch hits it foul just in front of his dugout, 0-1. one inside corner, and it's a called strike, 0-2. The possible run that would give the A's a 10 run lead is at first base. As that pitch is up, down and away one and two. Should Nelson who's at first score to give the A's a 10 run lead it would not be over as because the Giants are the home team they would get a chance to bat in the bottom half of the inning. As that pitch misses low. Two balls two strikes.
Tutu just missed off the outside. And it's gone full to McClovick with Rodney Valdez on deck. Who, although he is a pitcher, he limited at bats as an 800 average. So there's a swing and a foul, half swing foul, just off the end of the bat. Valdez singled in the last inning. And he pinched it for water. Valdez is now four for five on the season. Klamik spoils that one up to the right. Three and two still to count. Three two from Ditter is hit in the right, or actually right. It'll be, it'll, it's going to be a base hit though. A little yeah, looping line drive that looked like it might find its way in the right before Mike Gross was able to get in front of it. But all he could do was knock it down, and Ditter was late covering the Left fielder, first base bag. Number 48, Rodney Valdez. So everybody's going to be safe. It's just going to be a single. Bases loaded for Rodney Valdez. It's the 10th hit for the A's. Valdez takes one on the outside for a call strike, 0 1. Valdez, who is a lefty pitcher, although he's not pitching in this game, is also one to bat from the left side. And he's had success in his limited chances. He's 4 for 5, does have a double as well, and a stolen base. It's good for an 800 average. Now he's down quickly 0-2. And, so he looks at that one off the outside. A ball and two strikes. One, two, foul to the left side out of play. So another 1-2 pitch is coming up. Now Valdez, a little dribbler off the end of the bat, picked up by Vasquez, the throw to first is not gonna be in time. Another base hit. It's an RBI for Valdez. He's now five for six. And the A's pitcher now has an 8.33 batting average. Another third RBI. Baseman, number 19, Harry Stelt. That's his third RBI of the season. It's an infield single, the 11th base hit. A's now lead 10 to 1. And Stelt fouls that one away, 0-1. Delt will poke that one to the right side out of play. 0-2. Oh Hunter Berry scored on that infield single from Valdez. He's now two for two. And Stelt swings and misses on a pitch in the dirt. Chase one down low. And now it's up to Kyle Peterson to try and bring in that run that would give the A's a 10-run lead. First baseman, number 44, Kyle Peterson. It's Nelson at third, McClavick at second, Valdez at first. Peterson takes one down low for a ball, 1-0. So the second plate appearance for Peterson, he's 0-for-1. He popped out to the pitcher Ditter in his first at bat. Now Peterson hits that one into left center, and it's going to hang up enough. And Kyle Schultz is going to make the catch. And the A's are going to leave the 
potential run that would give him a 10 run lead at third base. So no 10 run rule, at least for now, as we'll head to the bottom of the fifth. A's do get one though, they increase their lead, they lead 10 to one over the Oshkosh Giants. Jan Brinkus will have fun with that. Hope he gets the uh, steroid test as much as Ed Payne's does. To the bottom of the fifth. It's a 1 0 count, and now two balls and no strikes to Jake Covey. Get this guy. Yeah. And now a strike poured in, 2 and 1. This is Covey's first at bat. He pinched Ram for Gajewski who hurt himself on a base hit as he was running on the first base line. Now 2-2. Two, two. That one was right down the middle. As Kobe took it. As Gardner is now taking a long look in and now a timeout called. Still two balls and two strikes. Kobe did score. That one is down low. Ball three, three and two. That one run is kind of important here because it's the reason the A's don't lead by ten. Now there's a called strike right on the outside, and it didn't look like Kobe had any interest in swinging the bat. And then at bat, as he'll take the called third strike, he's the first out. Left fielder number twelve, Kyle Schultz. The fifth strikeout for Gardner. So again, that run that Kobe scored, in an inning that Gardner also walked three batters. He gets through that inning without allowing a run as the 1-0 is popped up out of play, one and one. These are two outs away from forcing a 10-run rule. He also had the possible run that would give him a 10-run lead standing at third base with one out. There's a call, strike one and two. Instead, we'll play at least one more inning. On the one, two. Now two balls and two strikes. After that one, misses off the outside. Now a curveball swung on and fouled on the third baseline. Still two and two. Swinging a foul back, still two and two. Mm 
And that one's lined right to Kosenki is short. A few steps to his left, makes the catch. No way that Second out of the inning. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life, but that was awesome. <laughs> First baseman, number 22, Mike Gross. So now it's Mike Gross with two outs in the inning, a striker and a line out to begin the inning. Mike Gross has walked and struck out. He's 0 for 1. That pitch is down and away, blocked by Nelson, 1 and 0. That one's down and away, two balls, no strikes. Gardner shakes off, now gets the sign he wants from Nelson. And at the bottom of his own strike call, two and one. Now a called strike. He fell behind two and oh, it's now two and two. And that one misses down and away, full count. To Mike Gross with Hunter Messerschmidt on deck. And the payoff offering is a curveball way high, and that's ball four. The fourth walk issued by Gardner. Shortstop, number 18, Hunter Messerschmidt. He has also, Garner, I should say, has also hit a batter. He struggled with his command a little bit since the third. So it's Hunter Messerschmidt, and he takes a called strike, and it's 0-1. One blocked in the dirt by Weston Nelson. A's lead 10 to 1. They've got 11 base hits. They scored six in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, and one in the fifth. So that one misses two balls and a strike. The Giants got their one run in the bottom of the third. They've got three base hits. They've committed three errors on defense. All three of those errors were in the first three innings. Committed one in the first, one in the second, one in the third. It's now two and two after the foul ball. Gardner looks to the runner and will step off. Now a slight bend of the waist. Shakes off a couple pitches, now gets what he wants, and now we'll have a timeout. We're set and the 2-2. Inside and got in on the hands of the Giants shortstop. It's popped up out of play behind home plate. Still two balls and two strikes. Now that one's popped up to the right side in play. And Kyle Peterson's going to make the catch in foul territory in front of the Giants dugout, right near the on-deck hitter, and it will end the inning. Garner gives up his fourth walk of the night, but he works around it. I have a gift certificate to give And we'll head to the top of the sixth, A's, car wash. still with a sizable lead number two by nine. It's ten to one over Oshkosh. Two four one. You can see the.
Call for the A's, number 34, John Vanderplug. Some defensive changes. It's Jake Covey now on the mound. The first pitch comes in, and it's Vanderplug, the pitcher, in a pinch hit appearance, and he gets grazed on his front elbow, and he'll take first on a hit by pitch. So Covey, the new pitcher, replaces Josh Ditter, who goes out to right. Designated hitter, number 29, Jake Harnes. That's where Covey had been playing defensively, so just a switch between the right fielder and pitcher. No, it's Jake Arns. Vanderplug was pinch hitting for Adam Ryan. Now it goes center. strike 0 and 2. Peterson. Who's at right? We think Ditter. Jake Arns 0 2 looks off the outside 1 and 2. That one's down low in the dirt. Vanderplug not advancing. Two balls and two strikes. Schultz is now at first base. So the first baseman Gross went out to left field. And now Arns takes that one in the left. That's deep. And that's a home run. Jake Arns turns on that one. It's hit deep in the left. A's take a 12 to 1 lead. Jake Arns, dinger number one on the season. Second baseman, number 15, Hunter Berry. That's RBI six and seven. The A's now have the 10 run lead. It's actually 11. Game still not over. The Giants, because they're the home team, must get final at bat. Bill, who's that first? Uh, Schultz, number 12. So now Kyle it's Hunter Schultz. Berry, one and all the count, and now a swing and a miss, one and one. Uh, Gross went out the left. Some more defensive changes. It's Mike Gross, the first baseman in left, and Kyle Schultz, who was in left, now at first. Now two balls and a strike. Two ones, swung and a missed. Two balls, two strikes. No. You have four balls in there. Oh, I do, huh? <laughs> Oops. Two and two the count, and Barry pops that one up. Behind second base, and the oh, shortstop, Barry. Messer Schmidt, drops it off his glove as Barry, sprinting around first, will slide in just ahead of the throw. It'll be another E6. The second time that Messer Schmidt has dropped a pop up. It's his second error, the fourth of the game for the Giants. It's a two base error as Barry goes all the way to second. Now uh, 25. As now Ben Folger will step Folger. in. Now betting, number 25, Ben Folger. With the A's leading by 11, many other guys who usually don't get at bats, including pitchers, are going getting a chance to swing the bat, and Folger on the first pitch hits it in the right center. That's a base hit. Barry around third. Loomis is going to send him home. And the throw is cut off. And he's going to score. It's 13 to 1. It's the first base hit of the season for Folger. He's now one for four. His first RBI of the season. Took no time. He hit it hard Short in the right center. Number 14, Grant Kosenke. Passed Blake Dillavu at second base. So now it's Grant Kosenke, and now he hits that one high in the left, but playable. A medium deep left caught by Mike Gross, now in left field. That's the second out of the inning. Second out. 
Actually, the first out of the inning. Center fielder, number 24, Cole McLavick. Hitting started on the first pitch. Vanderplug was hit. Arms followed with a double, or excuse me, a home run, a two-run home run that scored both he and Vanderplug. Barry then went to second on a pop-up that was dropped by Messerschmidt in short center. And Folger just singled to score Hunter Barry, and now it's McClavick as he'll hit one over to the shortstop, Messerschmidt. And it'll be a fielder's choice as it goes six to four. As the throw from the second baseman, Dillavu, will go into the dugout. That's another error. So that ball went into the dugout, it looked like. So a fielder's choice, E4, allows McClavick to go to second base. Clavic would have been safe probably regardless. Left fielder, number 48, Rodney Valdez. But the bad throw allows him to go up 90 more feet. So now it's Rodney Valdez. Who's sporting a cool 833 batting average in five at-bats. Six. Now six. He's two for two. He came in with four at-bats. So now he looks at one inside, a ball and a strike. Does have an RBI today, too. He's got three RBIs in the season. So he looks at that slow curve up in the zone, two balls and a strike. Two one to Valdez. This is inside, three and one. Runner at second, it's McClavick. Brought it into a 4 6 fielder's or a 6 4 fielder's choice and reached on an error. Or advanced a second on the error as now Valdez pops up. As Valdez is put out for the first time tonight. But the A's score three and they take a 13 1 lead and we'll head to the bottom of the sixth. The A's can get out of the bottom of the sixth without giving up more than three Our runs. Chemical brings you the cleanup inning. Okay. Prize I should say three runs or more. Two, four, nine. The A's will win via the 10 run rule. It's 13 to one over the Ashcash Giants. That you please clean up
All sorts of changes as Harry Stelt is now on the mound. He gets a swing and a miss. It's 0-1. Jake Arns is now at third base. Vanderplug is in right. And Ben Folger is now doing the catching. Folger's the pitcher. Pop it off. That's the left behind the dish. You don't see that. 1-1 one, one from Stelt. It's a called strike. 1-2. and two. Stelt has seven career appearances on the mound. He made three last year, including a start. He made one in 2014. And three appearances. As there's a swing and a foul. Still one and two. Three appearances in 2011. His only career start came last year. For his career, he's gone 21 innings. He's given up 15 base hits. He's given up eight runs, but just two earned. He struck out 22 in 21 innings. He's walked seven. He has an ERA in his career of 0 0.86. Now the 1 2. It's followed straight back. In all honesty, this is just a move to save pitching for the merit not to the line. Another 1 2 from Stelt. Swung on and foul tip just out of the glove of Folger. Still one and two. So in his limited time on the mound, Stelt has been effective in a game that his team is up by 12. And in a month that the A's have just one off day and an effort to preserve arms. Stelt is trying to close this one out. So there's a swing and a miss. He gets a strikeout. Strikeout of Mitch Peterson and they'll bring up Tyler Arthur. The catcher, number eight, Tyler Arthur. What? What was that? Nashville beat Madelock tonight, 19 to 3. And on the first pitch, Arthur grounds it to Kaseki. Ah, it's short and it's off his glove. And that's the first error of the night for the A's. It's an E6. The play that Kaseki. Should have made. Third baseman, number 15, Logan Vasquez. He was able to get his glove on it a bit, but it still went underneath his glove. In a game that is 13 to 1. Not necessarily the end of the world. So the 0 1 is on the outside for a call strike 0 and 2. But it ends what would have, what would have been a perfect night on defense. We're in the bottom of the sixth. A's need two outs and they'll win. Via the ten-run rule. So that one's fouled to Arns at third base. Still no balls and two strikes. It's Logan Vasquez on deck. Excuse me, Logan Vasquez is batting Blake Dillivu on deck. One out in the inning. So now that one is down and we'll get away from Folger. So a wild pitch lets the runner advance. Folger, who let's say has very limited experience doing catching. He's usually the one throwing the ball rather than receiving. In the game that again the A's lead 13 to 1. It's a chance for Folger to get in and get in at bat as he did in the last inning. It's now a full count three and two. Now that one's lined over the head of Kasenki. That's in the left. That's a base hit. And around third and heading home is 
Vasquez, and he's going to be thrown out. Nice relay from Valdez to start it. To the cutoff, Kaseki, and then the throw to get the runner as Arthur is thrown out. Vasquez, the base Second hit. Second baseman, number 17, Blake Dillavu. Now it's Blake Dillavu. So it goes seven to six to two to get the out. Now there's a swing and a miss. It's 0-1 to Dillavu. The second baseman reached on a field choice and grounded out on a three and assisted. As he looks at that one off the outside, a ball and a strike. A's have 13 runs, 13 hits, one error. Giants, one run, four base hits, and five errors. There's a called strike. One and two, and the A's are a strike away. The win will go to Mitch Gardner, who went five innings, and there's a swing and a miss. Stealth gets two strikeouts. And closes this one out as the A's ease their way into this one. It's a 13 win. They got six runs tonight. at the top of the second. Your A's and they coasted their way to victory in this one. Tuesday celebration here at the ballpark brought to you by Bourbon Street. They are on the road Wednesday. The losing pitcher, on Josh Ditter. A1's birthday bash. For information and more details, you can visit our Facebook page and website, ShaboyganBaseball.com. And he gave up. Of Please the 13 the runs, he gave up 10 of them. Please drive the other three home was given up by Jake Kobe, who pitched in the top of the sixth. With the win, the A's and their small two-game skid, they moved to 19 and 10 Good overall. Game recap for the A's: 13 runs, 13 hits, one error, seven left on base. For Oshkosh, one run, four hits, five the errors, in the Wisconsin seven State men left League. on base. Moved to 12 and 7 overall. Winning pitcher Mitch Gardner, losing pitcher Josh Ditter. Time of game, 1 hour 53 Nashville minutes. Nashville Giants fall to 3 and 14 in the league. With the win, the A's are now 4 back of the Lombard Orioles. Make it 5 and a half. So the Lombard Orioles have a commanding lead. So for the A's to win the league and in championships it's determined by end of regular season standings. The only real shot is to sweep the Lombard Orioles in a four game set next week or in two weeks. The next game for the A's is tomorrow night. They'll play the Menasha Max. Who just beat the Manitowoc Bandits 19 to 3. It'll be a noble game, but it'll be Fat Tuesday here at the ballpark. First pitch will be 7:30. And the A's go to Appleton for one game. That's on Wednesday before they come back here Thursday against the Green Bay Storm. Then they have the amateur Wisconsin Amateur Baseball Classic on Friday and Saturday and Sunday if they advance to the semifinal and championship rounds on the Sunday for the A's are on a three day four game road trip they play Monday in Manitowoc Tuesday in Green Bay a doubleheader in Oshkosh before they come back home Thursday against the Dodgers and then they have that four game doubleheader or back to back doubleheader on Saturday and Sunday the 22nd and the 23rd against the Orioles Sounds good, Bill. So for now, we'll say good night as the A's win 13-1 in six innings via the 10-run rule. As they go in the Wisconsin State League Challenge, they go 2-2. Two two. They beat these Oshkosh Giants and they beat Addison on Saturday. And they lost to Lombard on Saturday and they lost to Kenosha last night. So 2-2 two two in the challenge. Before they have several Nubal 
if you don't count the Amateur Baseball Classic, they have five straight Northeastern Wisconsin Baseball League games. First meeting tomorrow, so until then, I'm Joey Grundle, your voice of the A's, saying good night. We'll see you again tomorrow as the A's take on the Menasha Max. First pitch at 7.30.